Hey guys, it's Ed again. Um, I just wanted to uh, touch base with you and let you know what we're up to. I was watching Musty One today, and he uh, uh, mentioned, uh, while well, in the process of doing his electrical, that he's working on uh, uh, going to cover up the decals of the police decals. Um, I mentioned, I private messaged him and told him that I would be willing to cut some vinyl for him. And um, hopefully uh, they, it's something that he can use. And uh, I, I don't know. Um, I, I know he mentioned magnetic pieces uh, to go on it. I don't have, uh, I guess there's capability to do that. My machine doesn't do that. It's kind of a low buck operation. I've done some pretty cool stickers with it, but um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of steel, uh, probably about 20 gauge. Um, I'm going to drag it out of the barn and uh, I got a piece out there, I think. And um, we're going to use that to um, make a couple plates and uh, at an approximate size that he needs. And I'm going to paint them uh, blue and then I'm going to try to give it a, a 40 or however old that machine is, patina. Good luck. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but that's the plan of attack at least. Um, so uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to try to take you through most of the process, um, and um, including uh, the, the software I use to cut the, the vinyl and show you the machine and stuff. Uh, but first of all, we're going to have to start making the metal panels that we're going to apply the decal on. Okay guys, uh, we're gonna go hunting for some metal. And this is where I keep my old, my old metal. Here's a piece of uh, really heavy 16 gauge. I think that's a little overkill. Sorry about that. It's a little tight over here. We got some old rocker panels. There's a piece of 20 gauge right here. I think that could be the uh, candidate. The rest of it's all bed stuff. So I can get a flat piece out of it. Sorry about that. It's a lot of fun climbing back in there. As you can see, it's behind the uh, the stove. Good thing it wasn't on. I'd be cooked. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to run this down cellar. I'll bring my snips down. We'll lay it out down there where I got more room, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Hang in there. Okay, guys. Our tools of choice to do this, now that I got it downstairs, is uh, the uh, Harbor Freight um, swivel head shear. Um, just to give you a quick on this, it's worked good. I've used it on some pretty heavy stuff, but I have had to change out the uh, nibblers on it. And it, it does leave you with scrap material like this. But it cuts really nice and uh, pretty straight. So that's a good tool from Harbor Freight. Um, the other tool that we'll be using is the old Milwaukee and uh, with a uh, wire rush on it to uh, clean it up and a um, T-square to lay it out. So we'll maybe start making some noise. What I've done now is I've taken this rusty piece of metal here, 20 gauge, and I've scored out a line on it, uh, a straight line, and another line here. This has been curved, so I made this is approximately six inches, just enough to work with to get it down to man size so I can handle it. And then uh, I'm going to cut that out right now. That looks better. Now you can see what I'm doing. So uh, we're going to uh, get the uh, nibbler out, and uh, we're going to nibble that shape out. See what we come up with. 
hear any other uh, little voices in the back? They're not ghosts. They're my daughter, my helper. So she's uh, down here working, uh, or she's writing stuff. She needs to work on her homework. i got to send her upstairs and do that. So, I didn't get my spelling Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, okay. So anyway, guys, here we go. Let's see what kind of square cut I can get here. Too bad. That's good enough for government work. Okay. Oh, I know I'm gonna block you guys, but uh, I put my arm over. Here. Hey, Liz, can you grab my ten snips over there? Where are they? Yellow handle. Yeah, I'll try. So, we're just gonna, gonna finish this off. Again, this is just roughing it out, so it's not perfectly on. Okay, well, we do have a square corner here to work from, so now I'll be able to uh, get this down to the right size. Okay, guys. Uh, we have now cut this piece. It is uh, 5 by 25, pretty close. Got a little wobbly down there, but oh well. Uh, now we're going to take and uh, hit it with the uh, um, wheel and clean it up a little bit and uh, see what I think about that, if I like it or not. And uh, hopefully it'll look decent. So, pardon the noise. Yeah, I kind of like this, guys. It's uh, it's got a uh, a little pit pitting to the metal, and I don't know if you're going to be able to I see that. See and uh, I think when uh, I put the paint on it, it's just going to add to the patina a little bit and really make it kind of look the the part. Okay, guys, I got the uh, piece of metal here already prepped. Uh, I've been primed or uh, ready for primer. I've got some uh, Rust-Oleum automotive grade primer. A little bit of that floating around. So we'll lay a little bit of that on there to promote proper adhesion. So we're not going crazy, just laying a little light coat on, give us something to stick to. Good enough. I'm going to try to hold this up on its side and hit the back side of it. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. This is an experiment. So we're just going to go with it. Yeah, I know. I spray paint on my fingers. Good enough. Give that a second to kind of hang out and uh, dry up a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm not really completely convinced that uh, my idea is going to work. I don't know if those colors are going to be close enough. Um, it'll probably not be quite right. So, but we'll give her a try. And... Uh, kind of cool down here it's not drying so fast you guys like watching paint dry it's a lot of fun isn't it what we'll do here is uh we'll prop it up against here that'll work 
and uh, I'll turn you guys off. You don't need to watch paint dry. Okay, primer's uh, about there. So what we have here is, uh, this is uh, Rust-Oleum uh, 2X Ultra Cover Satin Oasis Blue. Now, uh, this is a satin finish because, well, that machine is kind of faded out. So I don't know if I'm going to like it, but we'll give it a try. It's a little bit darker than... What I thought. Actually, that looks pretty darn close. I mean, I sprayed a little patch over here. That kind of is what it looks like. So, let me shake it up good. Move it back onto the thing here. So, Coat number one. We'll let that hang out and uh, do its thing for a little bit. I have uh, some gloss spa blue. Now, I really like this color to begin with. I thought this one was pretty close um, to the actual color, but I, I really like this one too. So let's just spray a little test pattern while we're playing here and see what it looks like. And... Uh, See if we like it or not. Okay, so that's that's pretty flat, and that's um that's definitely not the color of the can. <laughs> well, I guess it card sorta is, but I really like this blue. I think this blue looks pretty darn close. And um, what I'm thinking about doing is letting that dry, and then maybe this is uh. This is 2X uh, semi-gloss white, so it's a little bit flatter. I want to see what it looks like. Okay, so we got that over there. You can see that it uh, it's white, but it is kind of flat. So maybe I can use this to lay over the top of this once I put another coat on it, because I want to definitely have enough of this blue color. But I really think that that color is really darn close. I think. I mean, according to the computer, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm using to try to figure it out. So we're going to go with that color. Um, and then uh, we'll try to, um, we're going to let that set up for another couple minutes as I'm sitting here babbling and uh, letting that tack up a little bit. And then uh, we'll go on and hit it again. Make sure I grab the right color. I've done that before. When I was painting the tanks on the uh, the XR75, I grabbed the wrong can because I had two or three cans going at once. So this is semi-gloss white. We don't want that. This is what we've been using. Satin Oasis Blue. Kind of looks the, looks the part. So what we'll do is we'll hit that again. Lay it right on there pretty good. And uh, this is satin, so it's going to dry. It's like, you know, it's not going to be shiny. But I wanted to lay it on there thick. So if I lay the white on, kind of misty, then I might be able to, uh, once this is dried, use the scotch bright pad once that's dried and kind of make this panel um, do what I want it to do. But, uh, but yeah, I like the color. Looks pretty good. So, Hey guys, it's that again. Well, this is day two of the uh, Musty Cushman scooter project. Um, <clears throat> I sprayed this last night, several coats of different colors, some darker colors, some lighter colors. I'm still not pleased with it. I mean, it kind of shows the oxidization. Some of the blue is coming through. The darker blue but we're going to try a couple different colors tonight um i use the satin blue which kind of gives you the um this this color right here and then i used this uh gloss blue spa blue 
which gives you kind of that milky color, which that's pretty cool. Um, tonight's experiment, got a couple scotch Bright pads to scuff it up, is this. This is, it's water-based, but it says it cleans up with mineral spirits. So it makes me tend to believe that it's not so water-based. But the color is really close. Um, so I'm going to try this to see if it even sticks. And um, because I'm still worried about that water base. Um, and if that doesn't do what it needs to do, then this here, which is a little bit darker, is um, safety blue. So that's safety blue. This is caution blue. Now the caution blue uh, and the um, handicap blue, which is I think pretty close to what that color is. So this is one of these upside down spray cans. I have no idea how this thing works. So it should be a learning uh, experiment to see what happens here. It says here, uh, I think I gotta take this off maybe. Maybe i just pry this out of the way. Well, I guess that works. And then, do you just put your finger on the side of it? I guess, with your fingernail. That kind of sucks. I don't really like that. But, anyway. So, we'll uh, shake this stuff up, and uh, we'll see what happens, and uh, hopefully it looks better than it does. Uh, I just put a coat of that on there. That stuff comes out like gangbusters. I'm not sure I'm using it correctly. Um, but it does come out fast. Kind of gives you a hammered finish because it comes out so quick. But um, I like the color better. Um, I think it uh, looks closer to what it's supposed to be. And, uh, you know, that's just one coat of that. That's not with any of the blue blowing through it. I may even try dusting a little of that in there and see what happens. Let's see what that looks like. This is the plan I've come up with. Um, I've done this a couple times. Uh, as you can see here, this one here um, cracked. And it stayed cracked, which is odd. Because this one over here was the same way. And it didn't really stay cracked. It still has some in it, but not much. So I find that interesting. But um, we'll get around it. And uh, so anyway, what we're doing here is we're going to paint the back sides of these. Now, I would have primed these if I didn't run out of primer, but I ran out of primer. So, and I'm doing them two-sided. Um, I'm using the uh, rare earth magnets to hold them on. And that's actually seemed to work pretty good. So I'll show you the process of spraying these, and uh, we'll continue on. You can see, um, I don't know why that's shaking. That's kind of weird. There it goes. Stopped. Weird. Um, so anyway, this one's been primed. These two have not because, like I said, I ran out of primer. So what I've been doing is I've been going with this um, high-performance enamel. Dries in 15 minutes. This is safety blue. Giving that a quick blast of this color. Which is actually, I think, pretty darn close to what that machine <clears throat> should have on it. Um, so, got a couple little blurps in it, little water bubbles or something on it. But I'm okay with that because this is uh, going to have some blemishes. We don't need it to be. Uh, perfect because the thing it's going on is not perfect so a couple little this one's actually got a couple more blemishes but it'll be covered up when I get the other stuff okay we're going to give that <clears throat> a couple minutes just to tack up and then we're going to come back with the uh, the um, uh, whatever the heck this stuff is this is the caution blue okay this is the marking inverted paint marker and um, we're uh, lay that on That'll cause this to crack, but um, we didn't have a problem with it the last time, so hopefully we won't have a problem with it this time. And uh, it'll be able to flow into the, into the paint, I'm hoping. 
Okay, guys. Um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's starting to uh, kind of um, get this kind of cracked effect, which, like I said, I'm okay with. It doesn't bother me at all. And because um, it seems like it uh, straightens out usually. I know this other piece didn't, but I think we'll be okay, even if I have to give it another dusting later on. So these pieces will be pretty much ready to go. And uh, <clears throat> I have two stickers cut upstairs. I'm going to show you guys how I cut the third sticker, just because I didn't want to uh, show you guys the wrong way. And I did screw it up once, um, and I had to cut them again. So I'm a little rusty with using my own machine. So um, anyway, we'll let these things dry. Uh, maybe we'll come down and hit another coat in a little while and uh, see if we can if this stuff will work its way out. Um, not overly concerned so hey guys um, I wanted to show you the software that I use to make the stickers uh, this program came with the cutter uh, it is called sure cuts a lot uh, pro sure cuts a lot 3 pro there are some newer versions of this um, and uh, it always tells me when I open it but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a very simple program to use. Uh, you have text commands over here on this side of the screen here, the T. Um, and uh, you can type in, like Dog Pound was very easy, um, like the Musty One. Uh, once you uh, select that, you're able to get a pull-down menu over here that shows you uh, billions of different uh, fonts that you could use. Uh, one of the cool things about this is it has um, a, an icon here. It's actually right there. And that is called the trace command. And what that does is that allows you to take a JPEG image. Um, and, actually, I think any image, but I usually end up using JPEG. And uh, it will um, trace that image. It's called trace command. Uh, you can even take a picture of yourself, and as long as it's highlighted enough, it'll uh, trace it. So that's uh, a pretty cool feature of this software. Uh, like I said, it's pretty easy. Even I can run it, so it's uh, it, it works pretty well. Um, I'm not going to show you all the crap that I went to making this, but this is the software, and you'll have uh, some video of me actually cutting. So, Okay, guys, we're shooting some video here of this thing cutting. This machine is uh, a U.S. cutter. No, it's not made in the U.S. Uh, you can't see what it's doing. I'm sorry, it's just too much of glare. But the machine is uh, following the program that is on the uh, laptop. And it is uh, cutting the sticker right now. So uh, I will uh, show you guys how it works on the computer. If, if it works, I don't know. Um, this is a this is a little bit of an additional sticker I'm doing for uh, Musty. This one here is um, going to be um, uh, kind of cool. If it works out, it's going to be on a two-sided sign. Uh, his uh, his cover-up plaques will be two-sided. So um, continue on. Sorry, you can't really see what it's doing, but it is it is doing its thing. So. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try weeding it out and you can use all kinds of devices uh, you can use little push pins work pretty good uh, exacto knife works pretty good um, in this case I'm uh, going to use a screw with a very sharp point on it to try to pick the pieces out an example of that would be let's see here like this R I know you guys can't see it there's too much shine but as you guys can see that peels up and then that comes out so this is not the fun part. It'll take me a few minutes. I'll be back in a second. Hey guys, it's that again. Well, I thought I would show you a video of uh, the uh, signs for uh, Musty's um, Cushman. Uh, the top, uh, as you can see, is Dog Pound, uh, as he requested. Um, but I thought I'd have a little fun with it. And on the bottom here, we have a picture of the mouse catcher. Kind of like a dog catcher. But being, I even think this guy here, 
kind of looks a little bit like musty. So I hope he really likes these. Um, I thought they came out pretty good. I think the blue paint is a pretty darn good match. And we're going to uh, distress these a little bit. I'm going to go after them with the Dremel tool and whack them up a little bit and uh, make them look the part because right now they're a little too shiny and clean. But uh, after that, I think uh, we'll be able to get these wrapped up. I still have to do the back one and uh, the front one. And then uh, these will be ready to uh, get boxed up and sent to Musty. So thanks again. See you in a little bit. Hey guys, it's that again. Well, I've uh, got the stickers all applied and uh, I'm starting to roughen up the surface here, which is kind of sad to take these nice stickers and start to destroy them, but that's what we're doing. I hack off a little piece here. And, uh, You guys get the idea. That's what we're doing. So I will continue to scratch these things up a little bit, make them look the part, and uh, we'll go from there. Hey guys. Um, well, here is the final product. As you guys can see, I have went after them with the Dremel tool and got them all scratched up. This one here, I didn't go crazy scratching it up. I figured um, if they needed more scratches, he could always add scratches. That's pretty easy to do. So we're gonna get these things uh, boxed up. I'm going to add a couple sticks to the packaging so they don't get folded, you know, shipping. Probably you'll uh, bend them up a little bit, so I want to make sure they're in there. Uh, I was going to show you guys, this is the um, the magnets. Oh, it's childproof. I don't know if I can be one-handed childproof. Hold on, guys. Come on, focus. Here is um, a picture of the magnets. In the palm of my hand, you'll see a stack of nine magnets uh, and how small these things are. These are the rare earth um I, I'll, I'll butcher their name, so I'm not going to try to pronounce the uh, correct name of them. But they are uh, very strong, and uh, as you can see, they like to go back to where they were. I figure there's 10 of these in one of these little pouches. Uh, keep away from children. Somewhere, I think it actually said on here. I guess not. It's on the other package. But anyway, you get these at Harbor Freight. Uh, and uh, I figure, I tested it out on the side of my old car. And uh, I took all 10 of them and I stuck them, you know, two by two by two by two by two. And um, that sucker stuck right on there pretty good. So I don't think you need to worry about it falling off. Um, if it does give you problems, if it starts sliding around, like I said, Harbor Freight, $2.99, and you can get um, more magnets and stick more on it. But I like them because you can remove them, flip the sign over, stick them back on, change the sides. Because if you guys remember, I have made these two-sided with the mouse catcher on the back side. And the other thing that I did, which I don't know if I shot video of or not, but give Musty a little advertisement if he so chooses to use it. Musty One YouTube. So um, anyway, that's the project, guys. I'm going to box it up. I'm going to call this video done. So I really do thank you guys for watching, uh, subscribing, commenting. Please comment. Uh, let me know what you thought, if I did okay, if I did a crappy job. Um, I apologize, but... I am not a sign maker. I just kind of do it for fun. So thanks a lot. Bye.